my channel. This is Beth from Style at a Certain Age, and if you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm very happy to have you here. And just a little brief history of how I even started a YouTube channel. I have a blog, so for those of you that don't know that I have a blog, head over there. There's lots of photo inspiration and day, you know, daily outfit inspiration uh, to be had. But um, today, I don't know if you've noticed, but our summer days are fleeting. And it's going to be Labor Day before you know it. And I even read that, I don't want to scare you, but Christmas is 127 days away. I don't know. That sounds like a lot, but honestly, this time of year just starts, you know, zipping along and just at such a rapid pace. But um, the inevitable is happening. So fall, um, and many of us do, we, I mean, honestly, it's our favorite season uh, to wear clothes in. It's, it's, very, it's very fun. So you have boots and sweaters and all sorts of layers, and it's really kind of cool and chic. Today, we're going to go through my favorite must-haves in a fall wardrobe. I'm going to share 10 of those items, and I have them all lined up here. And uh, we'll just go through one by one. And if I know any little factoids, I like fun facts, I like to throw those at you. Um, it's always very interesting to me to find out the history behind uh, the garments. And so if I have a, uh, any knowledge, I'm going to throw it at you. But we'll start it off with my number one fall essential. Next. One of my favorite uh, fall essentials that I've always kept in my closet. I believe it's a classic, although it'll go in and out of trends, and it's kind of trending back in right now. But that is the turtleneck right here, and uh, I love black. This one's blue. Cashmere is probably my favorite uh, to have. Uh, this is a lightweight Italian cashmere, and then this is a, the heavier cashmere. But a turtleneck, um, they've been around actually for quite a few years, and they're known as turtlenecks here in the States, but they're, um, the Brits call them polo necks, and that's because this sweater was fashioned after the sweaters that polo players used to wear, uh, but they had the mock neck. Actually, I have a mock neck turtleneck on right now. So, uh, turtleneck, mock neck, um, but they really have come into play, especially here in the States. Uh, Noel Coward, I think it was in the, around 1920, she was a very famous playwright, so he donned a turtleneck and it just became a very casual cool look it was an alternative to wearing a, uh, a shirt and a tie so you could wear the turtleneck on and then academics kind of globbed onto it and so you, they would put their jacket over their their turtleneck sweater and so academics and um, kind of I just re even remember like you know existentialists you know with beatniks I, I remember as a young girl hearing that term but then uh, then fast forward a few years, and Steve Jobs uh, was very famous for always wearing a mock turtleneck. But women, we kind of came along, it's been, really been kind of a unisex uh, piece of uh, apparel, and we really globbed onto it, again, in the 1920s, feminists came along, and we started wearing them as well, and pr they probably were catapulted into popularity, again, with a movie uh, that starred Audrey Hepburn, and she had the very famous... Um, black turtleneck and black cigarette pants and black ballet pants. So, a must-have is a turtleneck. It's very, very versatile. I have more photos over on the blog of how I wear it, uh, but it really looks very, very chic with denim and um, my second favorite fall essential that's coming up next. So stay tuned. My second fall essential, and these have been very popular in the past uh, few years, and they're still going strong. They, 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 blah popped into popularity as a trend, but I think they're becoming more mainstream. And that is a leather legging, faux leather legging, or trouser. And I have several pairs here. I have black and, uh, so I have black here. This is more like a trouser because it actually fastens. Um, this is by Zara. These are several years old, so I will try and link up similar items. This is by Ann Taylor last year, so this is a true legging. And uh, again, Zara has the brown one. But they're very comfortable to wear. And especially when the temps kind of uh, dip down a little bit, they keep you a little bit warmer. This one happens to be a uh, ponte knit and leather, has a faux leather inset. And I'll uh, link up, uh, as I said, uh, items that are similar to that. But it looks very, very cool and chic, just with the, the turtleneck right here. Very, very simple. I like that look. Um, it also goes with a, goes gorgeous with if you have a 
my next uh, favorite fall essential, um, which uh, stay tuned and we'll talk about that next. My third fall essential that I have worn really since a teenager. It's kind of preppy, it's very classic, and that's a cable knit sweater. This one happens to have the V-neck. It's more like a popular tennis sweater. But you see the cable knit here. Uh, so cable knit or just a chunky one. This, is, this one's by Ralph Lauren. Uh, these are great. I, one style tip that I like to do is with a really big chunky sweater, I'll size it up. So it's really oversized, and then that's what looks really great. I told you I would share. So if you have some leather leggings and you have an oversized chunky sweater over the top, and then just throw on a pair of boots, uh, and then my next uh, fall essential, you just are walking out the door very, very um, just appropriate for the day and uh, warm as well, which you know the weather starts to dip down, and that's one of the things that we have to contend with. My next fall essential is next. And with those temps starting to dip down in the fall, a scarf really is a must have. And they come in so many gorgeous colors these days. And that's what I uh, said would be a really good layering piece over the chunky sweater. So you just wear that, and you have your leggings. Very, very cool, but there's so many different Styles. So they have the affinity scarves and they have the uh, blanket scarves. I don't think the blanket scarves are as popular as they have been, but I just pulled out a few just in the fall colors. This here's a camo with a pop of orange, uh, but nothing really dresses up an outfit or accessorizes an outfit quite like a scarf. But they're also utilitarian because they keep you warm and uh, keep the chill away. When we lived in San Francisco, I think uh, and that's when I really just became a big scarf nut because. It just really kept the chill at bay. But if it did heat up, I could just take it off. Uh, so don't forget to put a scarf in your uh, repertoire for fall. Stay tuned for my next fall essential. My fifth fall essential happens to be a really great layering piece. Uh, again, we're just talking about when the temps dip. So this is the puffer jacket. And some actually have, I have, I have three actually, I really do like them. It's a great layer piece. So I have an orange. This is a very lightweight one. This is a black reversible by Ralph Lauren that's really kind of cool. I just tend to wear it on the silver side so you can see the quilts. And then this one actually happens to be down. So the actually the puffer vest has not been around for very long and it came into play. Uh, it's a variation of the puffer jacket which is also a very young invention and uh, that was invented in 1936 by Eddie Bauer and it was um, he has legend has it that he had a very severe case of hypothermia he was a hunter and fisherman and he was on a fishing trip and when he was coming back with the fish they were wet and they had um, he, he just noticed that he was you know, becoming a little bit foggy and falling behind his his uh, a partner and come to find out the fish were still very wet and had basically frozen to his body and Luckily, he did have his you know friend that was with him, so they they rushed him off, and um, he you know recovered from the, the hypothermia. But that really led him to think, how can he create something that he can go on his hunting expeditions that would really really keep him warm? And he heard that the Russian military had been uh, experimenting with down feathers, so they're, because they're lightweight and they uh, wick the uh, moisture away. So Eddie just started playing around with the, uh, the down of the, the goose, and he came along and he actually, so not only did he invent the puffer jacket, but he also invented the channel stitching that holds it into place because his first variations of the feathers, of course, they all drop. As if anybody has a down quilt and they don't have the, the channel stitched ones, you, you know that the feathers just drop down. So that's what happened in his first rendition. So then he figured out, aha, I'm going to come along and stitch uh, the feathers into place. So the, the puffer jacket came into being from 1936 and they've also kind of you know come in and out of favor. They're really really hot right now. Uh, but about nine, no, it was in the 1960s the ski team in 1968 the US ski team and maybe some of the other um, ski teams showed up in these brightly colored down vests and our I think it was Susie Chafee and she was a bronze medalist in 1968 so she sported that and so everybody or they were kind of like hey I kind of like those and so that's uh, really how uh, the puffer vest came into existence and 
who remembers Marty McFly in Back to the Future, and he had the, the puffer just vest on, and there were like so many jokes about it, like, you know, was he in the Navy, was he drowning? Um, but uh, today, they're just a really great layering piece, and I just think it's a perfect fall essential. Stay tuned to number six. Another great layering piece for fall is the poncho. And these are wonderful to travel in, especially if you have a cashmere one, because the planes are always just a little bit chilly. This happens to be cashmere blue, love it. Uh, this is by a lovely company in England, Catherine Robinson Cashmere, and I'll link it up if you, because uh, I know you are, even if, even if I'm talking about beauty, everybody wants to know what I'm wearing. So uh, I mentioned that I'm going to link everything up, but this is kind of an asymmetrical one. But there again, perfect layer for fall, those, uh, just those crisp days. So cashmere is really, really nice. This is a Ralph Lauren. This is just a boucle, uh, but it has the, you know, the, the uh, fringe stitching around and it has a little blanket stitch here. But uh, just love to pop that over a turtleneck or just even a shirt, just for a little extra layer of warmth. Okay? Stay tuned for my next fall essential. Another must-have fall essential for me is the Mighty Feel Jacket, or the Waxed Jacket, which really helps repel the rain. Uh, and again, we have the military to thank for this invention. It was in 19... let me uh, check my notes. It was um, in 1965 that this jacket came along to replace... it was called the M1951. I think whatever year they're inventing something is how the uh, name pops up. So this uh, came into being, and the most, um, I guess the, the highest end is a barber field jacket, and, and uh, that goes back to uh, over in England, the Brits and hunting and, and uh, whatnot. But uh, a field jacket is characteristic. They have these big patch pockets down below, two on each side up here, and then two up here. Again, it's wax to keep the rain out. And the really, really good ones have, uh, in the back, this one doesn't happen, this is a Tommy Hilfiger, but they have a little zipper in back so that your hood is stored in there so if it really starts to rain hard you can just pull that out and pop it over the top. But what a great uh, iconic piece that this is turning into a very classic uh, and I just think it belongs in everyone's closet but for sure it's in mine. So next up is and next on my fall essential must-have list is a pair of khaki pants. And these are uh, not to be <laughs> confused with the, the uh, kind of the, the frumpy kind of uh, khaki pants with the pleats. No, we've done away with those. So this is a very modern. This is J. Crew. This is a very modern uh, cargo pant. It has a zippers. It's very slim fitting, so it has zippers here on the side and then the, the big pockets. But this is really just a nice alternative to denim uh, or of the leather leggings and it just really is perfect to travel in. It goes with a just, you know, pop it over with a turtleneck or one of the cable knit sweaters. It's just a great staple to have on hand. So cargo pants or khaki pants. My next fall must have are totes or if you just want to have one tote, uh, pick brown or black or brown and black. <laughs> I got it mixed up. Uh, these are perfect to travel with. They're perfect to take out on a shopping excursion. If you're going to have a lot of packages, you can just readily stuff them inside. Uh, but it just seems like in the fall, totes just um, make a reappearance far more than in the summertime. And just having just a very classic brown or black tote is just perfect uh, for your day-to-day -day wear. And what is my last fall essential? Stay tuned. Last but not least on my must-have fall essentials is the Chelsea boot that has been around since Queen Victoria's time. And a Chelsea boot is a short ankle boot that has an elastic gusset on the side so it's easy to slip on and usually a tab of fabric or leather on the back so it's again easy to uh, slip into. But the Chelsea boot came into popularity in Queen Victoria's time, and it was her a cobbler that, or her shoemaker, that uh, came up with this little uh, in invention here. And his name was Joseph Sparks Hall. And so these were known for years and years as J. Sparks Hall uh, elastic boots. 
and they were known uh, for that until like World War One because they were quite popular until World War One, and then World War One came along and they fell out of popularity. But then they were re resurrected again over in England, and do you know who really kind of leapt this into popularity again? Well, it was the gang in London. So there was this street called King Street uh, in Chelsea and Fulham. And so that's why they're called the Chelsea Boots today, is because of that. So there was the, who remembers, I mean, I was a young girl then, but the Beatles and, you know, the, the swinging London sets and, and uh, just all those really cool people that were wearing boots just like this. And so they have stayed really in popularity. Now they're just becoming a very iconic uh, staple. And that these happen to be leopard, but you can get them in blue and black, and you know there's there's lots of different colors. But um, the Chelsea boot, again, characterized their ankle length and the elastic gusset, and then the tab on the back to make getting in and out very very easy. And they look great with um, skinny jeans, and you can roll your jeans up to, to kind of show them off, or they really look great under trousers as well. But these are my ten must-haves for fall which is as I said fast approaching and if you're interested for any more photos head over to the blog there's lots of lots of visuals over there of how I actually wear each and every item and thanks so much for tuning in let me know if you like this video with a thumbs up and subscribe share with your friends and I'll see you on Thursday when we're talking about some beauty take care bye bye